Stitch Sisters. This is a video all about how to sew a linden sweatshirt. Well, it's actually a two-part video. <gasps> Because we are going to show you how to show a, sew a linden sweatshirt, but first mm, we're, we're going to show you applique. how to applique some awesome Christmas designs onto your sweatshirt. Yeah, because it's that time of year, ladies, you need a Christmas jumper. Absolutely. <laughs> applique is much easier done on a flat piece of fabric, yes. so it makes sense to add the applique first, and then in the second part we'll show you how to sew up the sweatshirt. Yes. So there is a challenge on Instagram at the moment called the Big Christmas Jumper. So, so long. <laughs> by what Kareen did next. Um, and we'd already planned this video, but then this yeah. popped up in our Instagram feed and we thought, oh, perfect. So mm -hmm. lots of you are going to be making sweatshirts yes. and we thought the video would be even more useful. Perfect. So the idea is, is that you make any kind of Christmas sweatshirt and then you need to post them on Instagram using the hashtag MyXmasJumper. And there are great prizes as well. There are some aren't fantastic there? Some prizes. prizes. Yeah. So we'll link below uh, to uh, what Corinne did next blog with all of the details on that. Yes. Um, but without further ado, we'll get cracking with the applique. Yes. We'll show you how to do it step by step. So the first thing we need to do is to make our designs. Now, it won't surprise you, my design is quite childish. I have <laughs> opted for uh, two Christmas puddings to be placed around about there. <laughs> <laughs> You've always I couldn't wanted resist. A Christmas jumper. I couldn't resist like being that. able to walk around no. and show everyone my puddings. No, um, and for it to be allowed because it's Christmas. Exactly. <laughs> I'm doing a giant snowman. Yes, with a top hat. A jaunty top hat. Yes, <laughs> and I've got some lovely um, buttons, what are snowflake buttons, because I've I'm going for a red sweatshirting. So my, I have a big white snowman, and I'm going to decorate it with some buttons coming down over the front. Yes, lovely. So how should you uh, transfer your design? Yes. Um, you don't have to be good at drawing. You can find an image on the internet that you like and print it off, um, mm -hmm. and uh, or you can just freestyle it. We've opted to freestyle it. Yeah. Um, and we're using a really cool product, um, which you may or may not have used before. It is called Heat and Bond Light. It comes in three different weights, is probably the best way to describe it. And the purple one, which is this sort of like deep purple, the light one, is used for a PK for anything from bunting um, right the way through to clothing. You can get, there's one which I think is called Feather Light or something yeah. before, which is lighter, which is great for children's clothes and things like that. Or for t-shirts, t-shirts, lightweight lighter jerseys. things. I haven't used the heavier stuff at the other end of the spectrum because no. I think that is basically, you don't even have to sew that, it's yeah. so heavy duty. I think it's for banners and things yeah. like that. So this is the one, you can get it readily from Amazon and from eBay and some If you just Google Heat and shops. Bond Light, you'll find loads of suppliers. Yeah. It comes as, so this is my little design for my top hat, which I've just, you can see I've just hand drawn it. Um, and it comes as, there's a papery finish on one side, and if I hold it up to the camera, you might be able to see that there's kind of little glue dots on the other side. So when you do your design or you trace your design, it you can put it on top of the picture and you'll be able to see through it just to trace on this papery side. You wouldn't be able to draw on the glue, the glue side. side. Yeah. So they're, they're trying to stop you from being able to do that so you do it the other way around. And it's really easy to do. So all you do is draw your design or trace it and then you take your piece of fabric. We're using felt just for yeah. ease. Felt's a really nice one for a plique because yeah. it comes in all sorts of different colours. Um, it doesn't yeah. fray um, and it's really cheap yeah. and it washes well. It does. So. You don't have to, or you also don't have to worry about which is the right side mm -hmm. because with the heat and bond, if you were doing it on a fabric, you would apply the heat and bond to the back of the fabric so it would be glued onto the back and then you cut it out and then your your design is on this side and you've got still got glue on the back to apply it onto your other fabric. We're going to show you in a second exactly how you use yeah. it but we just thought we'd show you our designs first of all so that's Nikki's top hat. This is my giant um, this is snowman. Her giant snowman. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see I've just hand sketched it but yeah. it's a snowman it's not meant to be perfect. For the puddings whether you want two <laughs> or whether you just want a single one like a normal person um, then uh, you just need a couple of circles um, so I've got a couple of circles ready to be cut out of brown felt. Um, to get my template, just find something, a dinner plate or a, a bowl or something. something. I found, because I want two, that just this roll of ribbon was just the right circle right for me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just freestyled some icing on the
on the top of that, which I've done nice just, drip. sorry, thank you. <laughs> I've done just a little bit bigger than the circle. Uh, I yeah. don't think you can see that. There you go. You've just done just a bit bigger than the circle for the puddings. Yeah. Um, and then finally, I'm going to need a couple of little bits of holly Lovely. to go on the top of my puddings. Beautiful. So we'll come back in a second and show you how to fuse the heat and bond, bond onto, onto the, the fabric. Felt. Yep. Okay, so I've come to the iron now, and what we have is we have our little uh, designs which we've cut out. You can see we've just cut them out roughly. You don't need to go around the lines at the moment. And we're placing it just on top of the felt, and I'm gonna take the iron. The iron is ideally on a medium setting without any steam. Now, if you buy anything other than heat and bond, you just check what it says on the instructions because it'll tell you exactly how to press it on. So all I'm doing is keeping the heat on it, moving it back and forth, and you can see that it has now applied the paper to the felt. You can see how stiff it is now, which is what's great about it. So if I take my hat piece, I'm gonna do the same again, just so you can see it twice. So I'm holding that in the middle, making sure the design is completely on the fabric, and then I'm gonna press it down, letting the heat do its work, and that will apply it onto the felt, it doesn't need any more than that, but be careful because it will be hot now. And you can see it's now really stiff. And what's great about the heat and bond is with any fabric, it's then so easy just to cut it out. If I was doing this with an ordinary piece of felt or a piece of fabric, it would be flopping around all over the place. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it out. I've chosen the easiest bit so I can do it quickly for you. And then once it's cut out, we then peel off the paper to reveal the glue on the other side of the felt. Just a little bit, there we go. So I'm now just gonna peel off the paper and hopefully you'll be able to see there's glue on the other side. So then when you go to your, your sweatshirt or whatever you're doing, you place it down on top in the right position, You iron it again and it will then be stuck to the fabric. So now it's time for us to actually press our design um, with the heat and bond on the back onto our sweatshirt fabric. Um, now obviously because I've chosen quite a specific placement for my puddings <laughs> then I've had to measure that first. If you're recreating my sweatshirt um, then it's roughly eight inches down from the point here at either side of the neckline, just where the neckline meets the raglan sleeve seam. Um, and it's roughly seven and a half inches in from the side seam. So I've laid that on myself to check that that's the right point. They're roughly eight inches apart. So that's gonna be the center of my puddings. I've got two puddings here with my heat and bond on the back. So I'm just going to try and center those over my markings like that. There's my two puddings. <laughs> now I've got my two icing pieces. So I'm gonna lay those on the top so they just come above the brown. There we go. And then finally, I've got my little bits of holly Lovely. to go on the top. They're gonna to be finished off with some red pom-poms. So I'm gonna sew some red pom-poms on at the base of the holly to complete the design. So once you're happy with the design and it's exactly how you want it, then you're going to use your iron to fuse the heat and bond once again. Um, I'm gonna try doing it through three layers. We've not done this with felt before, so it may be that I need to do each one separately, um, but I'm just gonna see that if I hold it on for long enough, um, mm. if it will fuse all three at the same time, because I'm lazy and I like a shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just gonna hold that on until the glue can be activated. And then once it's all stuck on, <clears throat> I'll be ready to applique it. Right, so we've pressed our little designs onto the fronts of our sweatshirts, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start doing the applique. Uh, I'm doing it on my machine which is a, with the standard zigzag stitch. So it's just the standard one that comes with the machine. You can obviously play around with the length and the width. Have a little practice and see which zigzag you like before you start. So I'm going to start with the white because I've got white in my machine. And 
I'm going to use the foot that's on my machine to help guide me where the zigzag is going. So my, the middle little notch here on my machine is the middle position for the needle and your needle will zigzag either side of that middle line. So that means if you run your fabric along that middle line, so the edge of the fabric, you should zigzag on and off the fabric. And that's exactly what we're looking for for an applique. So I'll just get started. I'm gonna start with a little reverse because I'm right on the edge here. So let's go. So do a little reverse and you can see that my machine's going on and off the edge of the fabric but I've not got too much stitch coming onto the red fabric. I just need to now concentrate and keep that line right on the edge. I'm just moving the fabric as I go. that's it done. I'm all the way around the white. You can see the lovely zigzag stitch all the way around. So I'm just going to change to a black thread and go doing the same around the hat. Right, we've finished appliqueing our yes. designs to our sweatshirt. So I have my Christmas puddings <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> so I've appliqued the felt on She's and then so I've awesome. just hand sewn a little cluster of red pom-poms as you do onto each one. Yes. So that was Beautiful. ready to be sewn into a sweatshirt. How's yes. your look, yours looking? My little fella is looking rather John Taylor. <laughs> so I've sewn him on, I've put his hat on and I've just sewn a bit of ribbon on. Um, here which I've left loose as you can see um, and so I've got a bit more hand sewing to do I need to put his eyes on I'm going to embroider a mouth and a nose on put some buttons on and I've got some snowflake buttons to sew on as well so I'll do that once it's finished mm -hmm. so okay. I think I'm shattered now I think we need a little tea break yeah we're gonna have a little mince pie break and then mm -hmm. we will film part two when we're actually sewing our sweatshirts together yes cool so cheers cheers <laughs>